Most of my viewers are familiar with swallow-tailed butterflies, but have you ever heard of a swallow-tailed moth? That's right, the insect I'm showing you today is actually a moth species and not a butterfly. However, if you're confused, that's not uh, surprising because this species of moth mimics a butterfly. This is the Apicopaea mensia, which can be found in parts of Taiwan and I believe parts of Russia and China and maybe Japan as well, I don't know from the top of my head. Either way, this is the Apicopaea mensia and it mimics swallow-tailed butterflies from the genus uh, Atrophanura mainly. And what's interesting is from by appearance it really looks like these swallow-tailed butterflies. Now why would it mimic them? Well, the answer is pretty simple and the main reason why mimicry exists in the first place. These butterflies are toxic and unpalatable to many predators such as birds who avoid any uh, similar looking patterns because their red bodies warn the insects that their bodies are loaded with uh, toxins that they would best avoid. So this insect is taking advantage of these poisonous butterflies by copying their appearance which is an appearance that most predators like to avoid because they are not edible to some predators. So it's provided protection and it's an excellent mimic I have to say really. I've seen quite a lot of swallowtail butterflies and if you look up close of course it's, going, it's obvious that it's a moth and not a butterfly but if you look at it from far away from some distance well I confuse them too and I really hope to breed this species on Ulmus. That's their host plant by the way. If you followed my YouTube channel, you'd also know that I'm breeding another species of Apicopaya, the Apicopaya hainesi from, uh, that I got from Japan. That means that I have two of these species in captivity right now. Um, this one I have yet to breed, but I hope that the adults will pair with each other and lay a lot of eggs. The moths seem very calm in captivity and they're easily handled, but don't be too gentle because they can fly away if they decide to in one second. They don't have to warm up or vibrate their wings, they can just take off. So be careful not to let them escape because they seem so docile on your finger. They can really fly fast and large distances if they want to. So it's really an amazing mimic. Not something you see every day. So it's going to be a very nice addition to my YouTube channel and I'm happy I could film it because first, yeah, see that's what I meant with being able to fly. Oh, it's on my, uh, on my foot. Hello there YouTube, you're looking at my, my sock right now. Let's get it back into the spotlight here. Good. Oh. These moths are day active, just like the butterflies. However, they don't pair during the day. They only pair in low light intensities, such as during dawn, sundown, or sunrise. But most of them uh, pair in dusk when the sun is going down, so you should place them outside in a cage and let them do their thing. I also believe the adults do feed on nectar. It's also interesting because these are a family of moths that I haven't ha seen before. Well, today is the first time. These Apicopaea belong to their own family, the Apicopaeidae. So it's not going to be a Saturnidae this time or a geometra day or something that we're familiar with. This is completely new. Thank you for watching. I appreciate your viewership and please stay tuned. I have some very special projects coming up this year. I don't want to spoil too much. Just keep watching. Until next time. Bye bye.